and greetings fellow machina users this is fontaine of www.vipsoundlab.com and this video is more or less a response to a member request who was asking me how to open a machine in 32-bit mode instead of 64-bit mode all right so let's go ahead and get into it what i'm going to do here i just updated to mac os uh, sierra so you know you might have to do certain workarounds, well not workarounds, but there's certain things that you have to do to open up certain apps. And I'll mention probably that towards the end of the video because a lot of people were saying they were trying to open certain apps and what happens is Mac defaults it now to where they lock up uh, certain apps. So when you try to open up certain apps, it's gonna say, it's gonna give you some type of error message saying like, you'll think like what you're downloading doesn't work or is broke, but actually it's not. I'll show you a trick at the end of the video, what you can do in the terminal to uh, open up those uh, those packages. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the video. I'm gonna open up uh, my machine right quick. Well, actually I have a machine open, but here is the machine application on the dock here. So what you do is you press control and you click, okay? This little dialog uh, window comes up where you can uh, go to your options here. You wanna go down to show and finder, okay? Here's your machine application here let me open this up a little bit more so you can see it better okay here's your machine application here so what you do again you press control and click on machine and you open up uh, this little dialog window here and you go to get info click that this little uh, guy comes up right here and you can see right here open in 32-bit mode that's how you do it so I hope that answers your question what you do is you just would tick this here okay once you check box or rather once you check this box here what happens is from that point, you close machine out and reopen it and it will open in 32 bit mode. Now me personally, I like, I like to leave mine as 64 bit mode because I believe it just gives a better uh, performance. You know, they can go down here, you know, check, make sure that you have all your read and write privileges and all that good stuff. And you know, everything is working as it should. I'm going to uncheck this because I don't need it on mine. And we'll close this window out and we'll go back to machine. All right, and as you see right here, this is machine in 64-bit mode. Now, this is 2.6.2. .2. I haven't put the 2.6.5 on here yet. Uh, just be patient with me, guys. I know I've been getting a lot of requests for Logic templates, uh, Studio One templates. I hear you guys. I'm on it. i just been busy with, like, a lot of projects, so, you know, a lot of things going on. So I'm definitely going to uh, take care of that. Matter of fact, what I'm going to do on the website, to make it a lot easier, what we did was we... Uh, made one file well not one file i guess you could say one giant folder and what we did was we put all the grammy award winning presets we put all the controller editor templates that we have for ableton live all the routed templates that we have for machine all the routed templates that we have for ableton yeah, ableton live i'm going to work on a pro tools one i have one there for persona studio one uh which matter of fact being with the new 2.6.5 update being that it preserves the audio routings. Now, actually, you can use actually some of our old templates. The only thing you have to do is just go in there and just update uh, the current uh, application file for whatever project that you have, and it should follow through. But don't quote me on that. But if it doesn't, um, I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to give everything a complete overhaul anyway. <clears throat> you know, keyword here, just be patient with me. We will get that done. And once I get it done, we'll go ahead and we'll upload it to the website. And uh, yeah, just stay tuned for more free uh, machine tutorials from www.vipsoundlab.com. If, if you're not a member, head over there now. And uh, once you sign up, we'll get you going with some free drum kits. You know, usually when you sign up, we'll give you like one or two free drum kits, you know, things of that nature, you know, one on one support, things of that nature. So, yeah, you know, as we move forward, um, PC guys, don't be scared. I mean, I'm still, you know, making, uh, you know, PC videos. You know, PC or Mac, it pretty much works the same anyway inside the machine environment anyway. All right, so here is a sample chop, and this is what I mean by a better performance. What happens is, if you're really avid about your sound the way I am, you can notice certain subtle differences. Like, when you're in 32-bit mode, you might notice maybe like a slight delay. It's probably very, very hard to see. But when you truncate something, it might slow down. And I think that's what's happening to the member because he was saying, hey, I'm, I'm truncating a sample and it's freezing. So I would imagine you're on your core audio and you're in 
32-bit mode and that might be your problem and maybe you're trying to get to the 64-bit mode I don't know but if you have that that 32-bit box ticked untick it and once you untick it you'll be in 64-bit mode that's the only thing I can think other than that maybe you don't have enough RAM or uh, I don't know whatever's not giving you a good performance you know I would suggest the, the first solution I, I would suggest would be to uncheck that 32-bit uh, mode box if you have that check you know and then just update all your AU you know your all your audio units your VSTs at 64 bit to get a better performance out of everything and just stick with 64 bit mode um, if 32 bit mode works better for you then I mean hey by all means use all 32 bit plugins and applications you know depending on what type of sound card you have because your sound card is going to play a major role you know if you have something like a UAD you know focus right sapphire focus right or you know things along those lines uh, there's many out here you know whatever fits your budget best you know you don't have to really have a million dollar you know studio with a million dollars of components and a bunch of gear you know you don't really need all that I mean what you need is just yourself your time and your talent you know perfect example Lex Luger got what so many placements and he's probably making millions of dollars now he got a placement on a broken down PC computer with the side wall completely moved with wires hanging out where he had to turn the computer on with touching two wires together. He had, he didn't he didn't even have any MIDI controllers. He used basically a a, a stock PC keyboard to do his sounds. <laughs> so you know, don't let people fool you that you need all this expensive gear, you need all this you know all these lights and bells and whistles no man what you need in music is talent plain and simple of course some of these nice things out here do make uh life a lot easier of course don't get me wrong <laughs> but um but yeah performance wise here's a perfect example here's a sample and i'm in uh this is 2.6.2 just give me a minute i'm going to update this to 2.6.5 Reason being, I wanted to do some some testing with the new uh, Sierra operating system. Um, you know, old for some, new to others. You know, and I'm I updated to it, so I'm just getting used to it. You know, I want to make sure that certain things work, and you know, make sure I'm not getting any hiccups or glitches. But um, for example, I can go to slice here, okay, and we can manually slice this up. All right, like that. And what I like to do is like to take my samples like this and I'll drop them in like this. Now, this is not something that everybody does, but this is just something that I do. You know, this is my workflow. There's no one way to work a machine. Whatever is comfortable with you, that's how you work. You know, a lot of people out here to try to emulate other styles and things what other people are doing. No, you incorporate a workflow that works best for you. Um, what I do generally, I'll press shift and hold on, on all these sounds here that I just drag and I'll go to polyphony and I set it to one. Why do I do this? I do this because it makes all these sounds choke each other off. Then you put them in the same choke group. You click this little icon here, you go to choke, put them in the same choke group. Okay, then from this point, I mute the first instance because I don't ever want to hear it because it drives me bangy. So from this point, you want to go to your edit screen. Okay, now you're editing uh, your sample slices that you can see right here. And I can just go like this. Okay. So when you do that, you can zoom in, zoom out, adjust your start endpoints from this point. Anyway, that's how I do mine anyway. And I press apply. Now you see how fast it applied? Now, from what the member was saying was when he pressed the apply button, it was sticking. It was just sitting there. And he was like, man, it's just sitting there not doing nothing. And I was like, yeah, you're probably using core audio. Uh, untick that 32-bit mode box, but again, if you want to use 32-bit mode, I don't know. I'm really trying to understand the question. I mean, I'm trying to reverse engineer it in my mind. And to me, if you're having a lagging problem, it sounds to me like you might be in 32-bit mode. You know, maybe go to 64-bit mode or update your drivers on your sound card and go from there. Zoom out just a little bit. So 
and again I'm just doing this just to give an example just to show what type of performance I'm getting in 64-bit mode and you can you can always check this by clicking this little ni icon right here when you click this ni icon right here uh, it'll let you know what mode you're in a box up here I'm not gonna do it right now because I don't feel like blurring out the serial and all that right now There we go, we got everything edited up nice and easy like that. And I'm just using, uh, I'll give you an example here. I'm using uh, my microphone, that's it. Under my audio settings here. I'm just using a USB microphone, core audio, as you see right here, uh, USB mic. And I'm running this at 44,100. So the sound quality is dumbed down a lot. Uh, it's not as you know pristine and clear as it would be in 96,000 KZ, but this microphone only goes up to 48,000 uh, KZ. So I just use 44,000 because I'm just using it to record my voice. But, you know, this microphone has a built in sound card in it, but it's not the greatest sound card in the world. So when you see my YouTube videos nine times out of 10, you're you're hearing this USB microphone nine times out of 10. Because that's what I use to, you know, basically make the videos. You can see right here, I don't have anything set up special in here, man. You know, everything is just off this mic, nothing special going on. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. That's how I'm recording this video right now. And I'm not experiencing, you know, any lags and the CPU spike. I can try to make this go up, but I don't think it's going to do it too much with this. Nah, I'm not gonna be able to do this. I, I probably would have to have a whole bunch of plugins in here to get some type of spiking going on. So, I, you know, you're not gonna get any spiking or anything like that um, off this video anyway. All right, so I hope that helped, rather, I hope that helps you out. And just to make it uh, easier to understand, let's go ahead and recap that. Again, you go to your machine app, you press Control, click, Options, Show and Finder, go to your app, okay, Control, click, go to Get Info. If that is checked like that, I will say uncheck that. But if you do want to go in 32 bit mode, click that. But again, I can almost guarantee you, you're going to get a better performance in 64 bit mode. Uh, so you just got to trust me on that. All right. So this is your boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLab.com. Another thing I did want to share a quick tip with you. They were saying something more or less along the lines of, they were trying to open up package contents and they wouldn't open And Yeah, I get that. See, Mac does that, but don't get me wrong. It's a good thing because it also protects your computer at the same time. They're basically trying to, I guess, funnel people into the app store. Um, for people who don't understand, I'm going to give you a better idea. What happens is, okay, when it comes to your security and privacy, okay, under general, okay, this anywhere box, it normally wouldn't be here. You notice how on mine is there on yours. It might not be. That's because, okay, for example, let me shrink this down and let me go to, well, actually, let me close this out. I'll make a better example. Let me close this out. Let me go under go. I'm going to go to utilities. This is how you set it up. You go to utilities. Okay. And you have a terminal icon here. Click that. It's going to bring up this little, uh, command window here okay 
what you're going to do is you're going to press, I'm going to press or type in, I'm going to type in sudo space SPCTL. Okay. Space. These two little guys right here. Then you're going to type in master boom disable on mine i'm going to type in enable what you would do is type in disable i'm going to type in enable because I'm, I'm going to show i'm going to put it back how yours on your computer looks at home okay then you put your password in for your hard drive you know your computer whatever all right so when i do that it's re-enabled okay so now what happens is i'm going to show you how it's going to look in your you know in your computer so now when you go under your system preferences or rather your security and privacy, you notice how it's gone now. This is how yours looks at home or I would say probably 99.9% .9 of people who just updated to Sierra OS. So, you know, you might want to spread the word on that. So in other words, they're not letting you, they have a trusted list of developers. So, you know, if you're downloading some, something off the internet, whatever it is, you know, for example, I don't know, you can be downloading Soundflower or Bottle or Wine or something like that. You know, or some, you know, or some people share apps. <laughs> you won't be able to do it. And what's going to happen is when you click on a certain app to try, you know, when you're in your, you know, when you're in your applications here and you're trying to open it, it's going to say the file's broken or it's not working. It's going to use some crazy error message. It's going to drive you crazy. No, don't let that fool you, man. You go in here. Okay. Again, you go under your terminal. You go here. What you do is you type in sudo. Hold on, let me take this cap cap off. Can't be in caps. You gotta type in sudo space SPCTL space. You got these two guys here. You type in master. Okay, boom. Disable. Okay. This is gonna show you how I had it on my computer. Okay, you type in disable this time. Okay, password. You put your password in for your hard drive. And it doesn't show up on this uh, computer here good because I don't want anybody to see that. All right, so now I just disabled it. Okay, now what happens is, let's say I go back under security and privacy. Now it's there. Okay, instead of App Store or App Store and identify developers, the anywhere icon now comes back. And that's the trick, that's the key because you need this to install certain applications. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, I would imagine for 99.9% .9 of people should, and that should be a big time saver from having you pull your hairs out and go crazy, <laughs> I would imagine. All right, so this is your boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLab.com. Stay tuned for more free machine tutorials, things of that nature. You know, if you guys are a member of the site, be sure, or rather if you're not a member of the site, be sure to head over to www.VIPSoundLab.com and sign up today, and you'll be glad you did. Stay tuned for more free machine 2.6.5 tutorials, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.